Hello and welcome to more Nerdy Rodent Geekery. Today I'm taking another look at in-painting. If you're not familiar, this is a technique that lets you edit images by removing, changing or adding elements. This of course opens up all sorts of creative options. I'll show you loads of things you can do just like the examples here from the Power Paint paper. You can do things like add to images. There you can see they've got the input and a mask and where that mask is, they've added lots of different items. You can remove things as well. There's a little comparison between various different ways of removing. And of course, Power Paint is the best. It is their paper after all. And of course, the other things with masks and out painting as well. Loads and loads of things. Now for this video, I'll show you how to do the basics for some of these powerful new in-painting models which just dropped. If you saw my previous videos on IO Paint and BrushNet, you'll already be familiar with the older models, but now we have BrushNet SDXL and a new PowerPaint V2 model as well. The new PowerPaint took some of its inspiration from BrushNet like you can see down here in PowerPaint V2, the author used the same method as BrushNet to train a model that can transform any Sable Diffusion 1.5 base model into an in-painting one. This time around, I'll be using Comfy UI, but IO Paint is a great option too. So are these new models any good? How do they compare to the special SDXL in-painting model, for example? It must be time to dive right in and take a look. I've got one group here for BrushNet, and right next to that, I've got another group just using the SDXL in-painting model. BrushNet, as you can see, is working with a typical SDXL model. Uh, I've got realistic stock photo in this example, a bit like with the old in-painting control nets for Stable Diffusion 1.5. Now, as we're doing in-painting, obviously we need to start with an input image and it's going to need a mask as well. For this example, let's just quickly select her face. That area will do. Okay, save to node. Now we have a mask. You'll see there's also an option here for load image as mask. So that's great if you've already got a mask saved. Maybe you made it in a different package. You can just load it and connect these ones up instead. All we need now is a prompt and just to be totally normal, I'd like a bearded hipster dude instead of that original face. Okay, now we've got everything set, it's time to queue it up and see what comes out. As you can see, we now have our hipster dude outputs. Take a look and see which one you prefer. We'll do a little zoom in there. And of course, one big advantage with BrushNet as well is you can use any standard SDXL models you already have. You don't need an in-painting one. OK, let's take a little look at this BrushNet loader where you can select various things. You click on that, you've got to pull down. And as you can see now, I've got BrushNet XL, the old BrushNet SD 1.5 and PowerPaint we'll take a look at later. But for now, I've got it on segmentation. But why would I want to select the other one, the random mask? Well, let's take a look and see. So I've got another image here. Let's select the face once again. Yep, that'll do. OK, save to node. Now I've got a mask and I've changed the prompt up a little bit there, a hipster rodent face. So basically I want a rat there instead of a human. So like before, I've got it on segmentation mask. If I run this through, oh, What's going on there? The, the, the standard SDXL one seems to have done a bit of rodentizing, but this one is still very fixed. That, that's not what I want. I want more like this. I want like a rodent face. And that is where the random mask comes in. Now, if I switch it to random, it's not gonna adhere to that mask shape quite as tightly. And instead, we should hopefully get something a bit more rodent-like. There we go. Interesting, eh? I wonder what sort of strange things can be created just by playing around with different mask shapes. The scale on BrushNet is a fun one too. You've already seen what happens at scale one, but what happens if I drop that to something like 0.6 and run that through? All right, that's quite interesting. You see there, there's much more prompt power. It's very similar to the original image, but not quite. Moving on then, and in our next example, we have much the same thing as before, only now I've got a blended in-painting option down here as well. There you can see the blend in-paint node. 
Why would anyone need such a thing? Well, the keen-eyed amongst you might have noticed that in those first few examples, some of the image outside the masked area could also get changed a little bit as well. Now, it's all very well and good at doing that, but it can be detrimental, particularly when you have something like text in there. This time, I've already made a mask, which I'm just loading, so you can see that way too. And also, if I do a generation this time, let's cue that up and scroll out. We've got three different options. So we've got the brush net once again, the standard in painting model, and then the blend at the bottom. Now that they've generated, we can zoom in a little bit, and it should be fairly obvious that that doesn't really have any readable text. Hmm, all right. How about the brush net one? Okay, that's also not very readable as well. Uh, if we go down and have a look at the blended in paint. Oh, look, selections from the Polaroid collection of photography. I can read the text. It's actually blended it in nicely. I know we've covered loads of things already, segmentation masks, random masks, image blending, but before I move on to PowerPaint V2, I've got one more quick brush net example. This one is just to show what they mean by their note. Be advised, not all workflows and nodes will work with brush net due to its structure. Also put model changes before brush net nodes, not after. Thus here, I've popped an SDXL style node. There it is just in before the brush net model. So we've got the model going up into there and down into brush net afterwards. So this one is before brush net. A very simple workflow then. You've got the cake. I've got a pre-made mask. I'm using the IP adapter style. So we get a cow and I've got a prompt in there, some kit and jello. So you can probably guess what the output is going to look like. If you guessed black and white kitten jello, then you were right. You can also see here from the blended one, it's fixed the colors. This one is much too bright overall, whereas that one has more of the original tone. So what happens then if you put it afterwards there? I've reconnected it after the brush net and it's going into the K sampler afterwards. So does it go wrong? Well, as it turns out, uh, no, not in this particular case. It seems to be exactly the same, absolutely fine, but probably best to follow their instructions anyway. On then to PowerPaint version two. Now this PowerPaint node does much the same thing as the BrushNet ones, apart from we're obviously loading the PowerPaint version two model here, and this one has loads of different functions. Like you can see there, it's got text guided, shape guided, object removal, content aware, and image outpainting. Now, when using some of those functions, the authors of PowerPaint recommend adding the following phrases to your prompt. So object removal, just add empty scene blur. On context aware, add empty scene. And the same for outpainting, just add empty scene to your prompt as well. All very straightforward, starting with object removal then. In this first example, segment anything is being used this time to detect objects and mask them automatically. You can, of course, still connect up masking like in BrushNet. Object removal seems better at removing background objects rather than foreground ones. So if I say leaves here, for the segment anything prompt, that should get rid of the leaves. I've also got empty scene blur in my prompt, um, but before it, I've got a massive luxury bed. So what should be happening is it will detect those leaves, create a mask for them, and where I've got the leaves, that should turn into a massive luxury bed instead. Okay, so if I run that one through, will it work? What will actually happen? Ah, yes, that's much more relaxing. Somebody resting on their bed bed. However, the whole image has changed a little bit. If we zoom in, you can, of course, see the telltale problems with eyes. For example two, I've got outpainting aided by the lovely outpainting node here. Pad image for outpainting. So I'm going left 256, right 256, and also a little bit of feathering there too. The image outpainting function selected and empty scene included in my prompt. And a little bit of help there. I want a paper cut style room to appear. So running this through will show us what the rest of his room looks like. And it seems that over to the sides, he has some blinds and a curtain. 
For the final example, just have a quick look here at what context aware outputs. So I've got two dogs. Let's mask one of these really badly. Right click, open in mask editor, we'll change the thickness of that mask. And let's just get rid of that dog. There we go. Mask. That is such a professional mask, isn't it? There we go. Save to node. Got that saved. In my prompt, I've got a cat and of course, empty scene once again for context aware. Let's run that through, see what happens. There we go. We've got a perfectly normal cat headed dog. Right then, I guess it's time for the nerdy part where I show you how to get all this running in your existing comfy UI setup on your computer at home. You can check the links in the video description if you don't already have Comfy installed as yet, and then carry on once you have. You're going to need the Brushnet custom nodes for this, so open up Manager to install that new custom node, and up there, you can just type Brushnet and then click Search, the one you want to install. The one I'm using here is the one from NullQuant, so Brushnet and then just click Install. That'll take a few seconds and don't forget to restart when prompted. With the custom nodes installed, the final step is to download the required model files. For this, you'll also need to know about creating directories and renaming your files. To perform these tasks, you can use the context menu which appears when you right click with your pointer somewhere in your graphical file manager. There you can see I can create a new directory. If I right click on that, then I can also rename. This knowledge will come in handy later as a bunch of files all have the same name. A bit like when everyone is called Dave, this can get very confusing. Hence, we rename stuff and put it in directories to make life easier. Oh, that's Big Dave, and, and there's Little Dave. Because reasons, there are two slightly different looking ways to downloading these files. The first being from Google Drive and the second being from Hugging Face. You'll use your web browser either way though. Crack that web browser open then and head on over to the first set of downloads for Brushnet from their Google Drive. Now the new models have SDXL in them and the ones that you want just have Brushnet. If you'd seen my previous videos, you know what all those other ones are. So just grab these two, the random and the segmentation mask if you only want the new SDXL Brushnet models. But of course, you can grab the old SD 1.5 ones now as well. In order to download, you have to move your mouse pointer way over to the right. Eventually, you'll see this little tiny icon there that says download when you hover over it. Now, when you left click on that, it will start to zip up the file rather than download it straight away. Now, if you want to avoid that time zipping everything up, because then you get a zip file you have to unzip on your computer as well, you can just double click to go into that directory. If you do the same thing again here, now when you click download, it should pop up a little window straight away. Yep, there we go, no zipping at all. Now in Comfy UI, you only really need this model file, so that's the way I suggest you do it. But the problem is all of these model files are called diffusion pytorch model dot safe tensors. It's a good job I showed you earlier how to rename files and make directories because you're going to have to do that now. How do I know which Dave is which? Well, I just followed the example they gave on the custom node page. There they got this is a structure of my models in paint folder. So I did exactly the same thing. There it is. So I've got Comfy UI models in paint. I've got brush net and I've renamed all of those models. So I've got random segmentation, exactly the same as they've got there. Okay, so now you've got the brush net models downloaded, but where are the PowerPaint V2 ones? Well, now you need to download files from Hugging Face instead of a Google Drive, but don't worry, it's much the same as before. You hover over the little thing and then you click to download. The first two to download are diffusion underscore PyTorch underscore model and also PyTorch underscore model from there. And the third file is the model.fp16 one that should go into your models clip directory. No renaming this time though, but you can do if you like. 
for the workflows. They are all under the examples directory for the custom node. And if you want the same ones I used today, they are available along with all the notes for this video to my amazing Patreons. Note also that some of the workflows are going to use other custom nodes as well. So if you see any red missing node errors, then don't forget to click on install missing custom nodes from manager there. There are loads more options and other things you can do with these models and custom nodes as well. So do go over to their GitHub page and have a little look. Lots of different things on the settings, all sorts of examples, so many different ideas. Plus, for a bunch of other BrushNet and PowerPaint examples, then do take a look at my previous videos. To all who watch Sincere Thanks Our Ode, as well as to all the nerds who code. If locks were had, it can't be bad, so tap that like and subscribe to you know it's the road and thing to do.